Senator Obama, I don't want to uh, take too much of your time. But I just want to offer a suggestion. Um, I'm the general counsel of Houston Community College in Houston. And of course, as you know, Houston is hosting 200,000. A lot of the evacuees from the New Orleans and other areas that were devastated by Katrina. And we at the community college have been working to offer training to those evacuees um, so that they might um, be acclimated to the, to the workforce. Right. And um, one of the things that uh, we're trying to do is to get funding uh, for those training programs uh, in Houston and other places in the country. Right. And I was wondering whether or not those funds that the President Bush has identified as being available, some of those might be directed to facilitating that through the community Absolutely. colleges. Absolutely. I mean, this right. is this is going to be a major battle in the reconstruction process. I said we need to go ahead and extend our hand to George Bush and say let's be partners, but in doing so, we've got to make absolutely sure that the people who've been displaced have the opportunity to participate in the rebuilding of their own communities. Right. And this is and one of the one of the best ways of doing that is to in fact use the community college infrastructure all across the country to provide training on environmental cleanup. Exactly. You know, you could do a, uh, a, a week-long course in basic environmental cleanup that allows people to get Im jobs immediately, right. then transitions into uh, construction. A whole lot of unskilled folks uh, could participate in this process right now and have long-term skills for the future if it's designed properly. So we'll be uh, trying to work on that very diligently. Right. I'll be Thank in touch. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sir. Yeah, go ahead. Senator Obama, uh, my name is Kobila Benna. I'm a skinny kid with a funny name from Tennessee. And as someone who has done so much to inspire so many, myself included in that, that bunch, what or who has inspired you to do so much and be such a figure? Peter Bino. Well, um, Peter's been one of my inspirations. Uh, you know, uh, I actually spoke at Boston College yesterday. The uh, the uh, the school had assigned my book uh, as required reading for their entire freshman class. I don't know if they actually read it, but they had to buy it. Um, but. You know, those of you who, who, who've read the book, I think, are aware of the fact that I didn't know my father very well. Uh, he, he was basically an absent figure in my life. And so you know, I had to, I think, piece together uh, a, a sense of how I might become a man uh, through sort of a patchwork quilt of people that I met or people that I saw. Charles Hamilton Houston actually is one of those people uh, because when I read about his life, uh, I understood the power of, of what might be done through great determination and skill uh, and stick to it. Uh, to it um, I'm not sure I said that right, but that's okay. Um, I, uh, you know, I think like many in this room were inspired by the civil rights movement, not just by Dr. King, who was a great inspiration, but by people like E.J. Nixon and Bob Moses and, and, and folks who weren't in the limelight but uh, worked to, to help ordinary people do extraordinary things. And that's probably why I went into community organizing. Um, and then my mom, because uh, what I talked about in terms of empathy, uh, she, better than anybody I know, her heart would bleed for other people. I mean, she just and was constantly curious about other people, and that's why she married this brother from Africa. <laughs> She's very curious about other people, <laughs> and uh, and was what one of the sweetest uh, souls I ever knew, and and I suspect that, yeah, I mean, everybody's going to talk about their moms, you know, but. Uh, I, you know, when I think back to where I got my values, 
most fundamental values from, I think I got them from her.